Thank you everybody for joining today, this uh, another MSCRM addons.com webinar. Uh, today we're talking about Documents Core Pack Template Designer, uh, the Documents Core Pack Template Designer and these feature updates that we've got here. We've got a few new things to show you, um, some things that are already out and some things that are should be out probably by the end of next week. Okay, so just kind of want to get into it. For those of you guys who are not familiar with Documents Core Pack, I saw from the survey that there were a few of you. Um, that had not used Documents Core Pack, so I just kind of want to briefly go over this, kind of what, just an overview of what Documents Core Pack is going to do for you. Uh, basically, what it is, is it's a powerful document generation tool um, and does a lot of other things like some post-processing stuff um, as well. So, uh, basically, it's contained, it has a simple user-driven dialogue um, that, uh, that you can use um, to basically create your document, email the document, save it to SharePoint, etc. You can bundle all those, um, those, those little things, those little commands that you're giving it if you're doing these over and over again into these one-click actions where you just click the button and then these actions happen. Like, so I can create a document attached to an email, send the email, you know. And the other piece that we have to that uh, that's added into that is workflow automation and a scheduler. So workflow automation, it's going to be, you know, part of your workflow to be able to create these documents and, you know, send emails, et cetera, save to SharePoint, all that stuff. And then what the scheduler does is the scheduler uh, gives you the ability to run those workflows at a set schedule. So if you have something uh, like an email with a report that you want to send out that you've created in Documents Core Pack that you want to send out once a month, uh, you can do that with the scheduler. And that's all built into the product. Um, today, since we're going to be covering the template designer, just kind of want to go over a few of the highlights of the template designer. Um, basically, it's an add-on for Word. Okay, so all the features and everything that, that you have for creating documents in Word, you have as well uh, with the Documents Core Pack um, Template Designer. Uh, it supports uh, one-to-many, many-to-one, and many-to-many -many relationships. Um, it has support for uh, multi-level data resolution. What I mean by that is that, say, for example, if I'm creating a document and I'm creating it on the account level um, and I need to get something from the quote, I can go from the, um, the account to the related opportunities, to the related quotes, and pull information from that and put it into my documents. So basically more than one level deep, so I can go multiple levels deep. Um, also, it has support for uh, complex documents. I mean, a couple of these features today, you're going to see a few of the things that we can do. But it also um, can do pictures, images, sub-documents, things like that. You can put all this, you can put all this into your template. All right. So what we're here for is the new template designer features. Uh, today, uh, the first one is, would be Time Logic. Uh, time Logic is a, one that has been really requested from a lot of people. And basically, what this allows you to do is perform calculations with a date field. Okay, so you can add or subtract. Um, you can round, you know, things up to like the next seven days or something along those lines. Uh, it allows you to. Um, Basically, some of the examples are at a certain amount of time to a date, uh, such as like from today's date plus 30 days or plus 90 days. Um, and you can also do the difference between two given dates, uh, which is pretty handy. The next piece is conditional formatting. Well, what conditional formatting is going to do for you, um, it's kind of an extension of our, um, our tool that allows you to create these complex conditions. This allows you to take those conditions and apply formatting uh, based on those, based on formatting of the content based on those conditions. Um, it uses the uh, MS Word styles, or it can use like custom styles. You can create your own styles, uh, your Word uh, Word styles uh, for that to use. Uh, some of the examples would be like changing a text color, or the font, or the size of it, or indenting, or justification, and things like that. And uh, you can also use it to change table styles as well. Um, the last two pieces kind of go hand in hand. It's a little bit of a, a nice quality of life change. Uh, template versioning. Uh, this is one of those things, if you're familiar with Documents Core Pack and you've used it before um, and you've created templates with it, I'm sure you've run into a situation where you've made a change in your template and the template broke and you had to contact us at support only for us to tell you that your template's broken and you need to restore from backup and then you realize you didn't have a backup or you didn't version your template and had something to fall back on you had to recreate the entire template. Uh, this new feature automatically saves each version of a template up to 25 previous versions of it. 
um, and you can restore any previous version as needed. So it's kind of like an on-demand thing. So it's really handy for you. You can now just not worry about, you know, you can create the template and not have to worry about, you know, if this change that I'm going to make is going to uh, break my template and I don't have a backup. You're always going to have a backup now. Lastly is a template tree view. Um, this basically will show you a preview of a, the selected template. Now, if you have a lot of templates in your system and you're having to go through them and kind of look at each one and try to figure out which templates you're, uh, you know, you're trying to work with, um, this is a real handy feature because you're able to kind of view it. Uh, excuse me. Sorry about that. Um, so you have uh, the full, full view and a detailed view as well of this so you can you can glance these things over and and make sure you're picking the right template to work on all right so for our demo today basically the first scenario is help i have an error on my template and i need to restore it how do i go about doing that um, also going to show you what the template preview looks like in this one as well and the next scenario is basically i want to create this sort of opportunity report that i'm uh, kind of creating for myself to kind of help me uh, manage my opportunity and my estimated uh, close dates. Um, I'm going to do that using the conventional formatting and time logic. So I'm going to go ahead and get right into Word. OK. And then right on over here to my MS Serum add-ons tab and go ahead and open up my template. This template, I was kind of working on it, and I broke it. So let's just go ahead and look here. And this is a quote template. And <coughs> so I've got two. It was. I know it was this quote with grouping base. I'm not sure which one it was that I was working on. So one of the things I can do is right over here, you'll see these nice two little pieces right here. This first one um, is to enable the preview. Okay. Um, so I can just kind of blow that up so we can all take a look at it. So I can take a look at these templates here and I can actually look at the template without having to open it and then realize that, no, I wanted to open this other one. Um, I can look at these quickly and easy, so let me make sure. Okay, yeah, great. So it was this one that I was working on. All right, great. Now just go ahead and open that up. All right. So open up the template and just kind of want to show you here. I'm just going to run this real quick uh, and show you the problem that I'm having with it. So let me just run this. So here I've got this table. It's a dynamic table. It's supposed to get out all of my products and put them into a nice, neat table and everything. And you can see here that it's totally broken here. It's not coming up correct. I'm sure if you guys have worked with this before, saw a couple people that are in here that have had an issue similar to this. Uh, yeah, so this is this is broken. Normally, I more than likely have to redo this table, but because of this new feature that we have, I'm going to just go ahead and close both these. Go ahead and open up my template again. Select the quote and grab that and then select this quote with grouping base. So here what I'm going to do is this little button right here, it shows me my previous template versions. I can go ahead and click that. I know for a fact, let's see, I'm pretty sure that this, this one right here, I know this one's correct. Um, so it's a previously uh, previous version of the template. I can just click on it. You can see all my template saves here and just hit recover. What that does is then it just opens up this old template uh, that I've had. Uh, I can go ahead and come over here and test this to make sure that it's working. So I'll just choose the data here, search, and go ahead and do my, my test record. And let's take a look, see here. Once it merges, yeah, great. So you can see everything's back to normal. You know, my templates, my table is actually working again. So I can actually close this as well and then come back in here and save this template. Now, one of the nice things is here is we automatically rename this to tell you that this is actually a recovered template, the date you recovered it on, and the time that you actually recovered it. So you can actually save that in there or delete this all out and then basically um, uh, basically save over the top of this old one uh, that wasn't working. So uh, great. So I'm not going to do that because that's going to ruin my example. So I will go ahead and close this out. So those are those two features, really small, really easy and quick. Uh, you know, you're able to show those two really quick. Um, but, the, you know, there is, if you, like I said, if you've worked with this before, um, you can understand the frustration um, of having to try to find a backup template. But now it's, it's pretty easy. So really nice. All right. 
So, on to my next example that I'm going to do. Oops, did that last time. Going to go ahead and open up this new template that I'm working on. So, in this little thing here, basically, I'm a technical guy, but I've been charged now with uh, doing some sales, right? So, I have these opportunities. I'm not really good at, uh, you know, keeping up with my estimated close date. So, this is just a little small report that I'm kind of doing for myself. Basically, here, um, I can run this against the accounts that I have. It's going to give me the name. It was created by, right, if I want to show it off to anybody. Uh, show me my opportunity name here in my table, uh, when this was the, uh, the opportunity was actually created. Here would give me my estimated close date. <coughs> I don't have that filled in just yet because I want to kind of do something with that. And here what I'm going to have is a suggested close date, right? So what I want to do is I want to run this and, you know, like some, uh, some accounts have several opportunities assigned to it. So I want to just quickly take a quick glance at this and see um, that, you know, if my estimated close date have, are, are, you know, are basically like I have a certain date and they're in the past from the certain date. So if, they've, if I've basically overshot the estimated close date, I'll well, see that really quickly. Best way to do that is to put them in there and turn them red and bold, right? So they kind of show up. Um, the other ones that are, that, are, that are, you know, in the future, I don't really have to worry about that much. So, but just because I'm going to make them green uh, because that's pretty cool. And then lastly, what I want to do here for the suggested close date is the ones that are basically uh, that I've basically missed the estimated close date on. I want to kind of add some time to it to give me a better estimated close date to put back in the CRM too. Uh, so I want to have this thing do it all for me because I'm lazy. So here we go. So what I want to do here to start off with is come on over here to my MSC or Madons tab. Um, click my insert mail merge fields and the first thing that I want to do here is I'm going to create have to create a condition right so I'm going to create a condition so it's going to be computed items a condition field all right so the first condition that I'm going to create um, I basically want to separate the two out between the two date is so if one's like greater than this date I'm going to turn it green and if it's less than this date I'm going to turn it red and bold so I need to do that so um, I'm just going to call this date check <coughs> because, you know, that's just what I want to do. Here I'm going to create a, uh, a condition. I'm going to create an else block. Um, oh, wait, wait, wait. I've messed up. I need to do this for, actually for my table. This is important. Let me grab the right table here. This is basically where we do all these dynamic tables here on this additional tab. As most of you all well know. But, again, computed items. Got ahead of myself. So condition field. And then here we go. Check spelling date. All right, so I'm going to create an else block here. I'm going to put these two conditions next to each other. This will make sense once I get this in there. So here I'm going to define the condition here, and basically I'm going to take the estimated close date, and if the estimated close date is greater than or equal to today, I'm going to turn that green. Okay. So because I'm creating this else block, I'm also going to have a negative condition, so if it doesn't fall into this, uh, this doesn't check out with this condition, it'll run the second one, and those will be turned red and bold, okay? So I'll go ahead and say okay. So here we go. So this is the first part of my condition of my check date, and this is the second part of my condition here. So this little uh, exclamation point means that um, it's a negative, right? So this doesn't check out. So the first thing I want to do is lay down another control or another condition um, that's going to actually change uh, my the color of my my text. So again, I'll do the insert fields piece, the computed items condition field. All right, and now I'm going to say uh, I'm just going to make this easy and say green, just for me. Um, and here is the new piece here. If you've used this before, you're f kind of familiar with this all here. This is the new piece is conditional formatting. So I don't have any styles to find, so I have to define a new style here. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that. And this is basically the control from Word to create uh, different uh, Word styles. Okay, so I'm going to call this one green, right? And here I have different style types that I can pick from. Mine's actually going to be character, 
The style types that we support are paragraph, which will change the color of the entire paragraph, the character, which will change the color of what's basically in the content, and then the table, which you can alter the appearance of the table, um, the whole table. <coughs> so I'll pick character here. And again, uh, you know, you have like if you pick the other one, like say for example, paragraph, you can change the the font, the font size, whether it's bold, italicized, etc. Uh, the justifications, the spacing, the line spacing, etc. The indentions, all that stuff's available to you. Character, it's a little bit less, right? It's just the we're worried about the uh, the this little piece right here. So we're going to make this green, right? So it gives me a little sample of what's it going to look like. So that's great. That's exactly what I want. So now I've created that. Now it comes into my little, uh, my format, my style format. So I can go ahead and select it, right? All right, because so I'm going to select that. And then I basically have to now uh, create the, uh, the condition for it to check against to actually turn this green. So I'm going to say here, estimated close date, again, is greater than or equal to today's date. Okay. All right, good deal. So I'm going to go ahead and put that in there and say OK. So now I have basically here two nested conditions, right? I have my first one where I'm going to check the date. And if that checks out, it's actually going to print that in there. And I'm going to check to see if it's if it falls into the basically the same thing. If it is, I'm going to turn it green. So now that I'm in this content control, what I'm going to do is I'm going to insert my estimated close date into that first one. All right. So I don't need help. Uh, so here, now got to do the same thing again for the second one. Here though, want to change it to red. So again, I'll go to my computed items, my condition field, go through this one a little bit quicker, change this to red, okay? My condition formatting, again, if I wanted to, I could select ones that I've already predefined. Um, so and then I'll say new, make this one red, okay? So and then again, in the context of the characters, I'm going to make it bold. And I'm going to say this is going to be red. All right. So there we go. So I'm done with that. So I say OK. And again, I have two now to choose from, red and green, the two that I created. And this one is basically estimated close date is now less than today's date. OK. So I'll say OK. Great. So again, I have my two content controls, my check date condition my uh you know thing to change the formatting go ahead and insert my estimated close date into there now you're probably thinking to yourself you know hey this kind of doesn't make sense you know because if you've used these conditions before these regular condition expressions you know that you can kind of nest them inside each other right uh but for the um uh, for the conditional formatting, uh, you kind of have to separate them, right? Because I can't nest this one inside of the, uh, like the red one inside of the green one, right? That doesn't end up working out correctly. Um, <clears throat> so it's it's just better to kind of separate them out, okay, um, with these conditions. All right, great. So I have that set up. Now what I want to do is go ahead and set up this kind of suggested close date. So what I want to do here is go ahead and do another condition field. So what I want to do here is really and truly, I really don't need a suggested close date for any of them that are, uh, you know, that are, uh, you know, that are basically going to be green right here. I don't need a new suggested close date for that. So I'm going to put in a condition there that, uh, um, uh, that that's, that's actually going to do that for me. So that make it blank. So I'm going to use an existing condition. And I've already got one, check date, right? So it checks if the estimated close date is greater than or equal to today. So I'm going to make that a negative condition, right? And then it's only going to give me the ones that will, uh, that are that are going to be actually, uh, uh, you know, to fall in this category that I need to update the uh, estimated close date on. So I'll say OK. And again here, uh, let's see. My next little piece that I'm going to do here is the date time. So I will go ahead and insert computed items, uh, go to my date time fields. Okay. And this brings up this nice little uh, piece here. Pretty simple and easy to use. Uh, gonna, not really going to go into the formatting or anything like that of the, of the patterns that you use for this. i uh, just gonna sh kind of show you a few. Uh, I'm going to actually show you this one way where we can actually add days to a date. 
Um, you can also remember, you can subtract days from it, you can round it up, um, and there's a whole lot of different things that you can do um, due to this, right? So I'm going to just say, here I just want to add, right? And then it's the number of days, or I'm actually going to do months, so I'm going to say I'm going to add three months to it, um, and then I just need to put in the what I'm going to do. Month, all right? So you can do days, you can do minutes, you can do seconds, uh, you can do years, so you can add a lot of stuff to it. Give it a place, you can give it a placeholder text so that it's nice and easily re readable, uh, you know. So I'll just call this new estimated date. So I know what it is without having to open it. And then give it its formatting here. So you got a lot of different formats you can choose from. So I'm just going to pick this standard format here and then say OK. So this is one way to basically do it. Uh, I'll show you another example here in a second that I did in another template. So I'm just going to say OK here. So great. So now this should actually run. So what I want to do here is just go ahead and save my template. And let's see here. So I'll just save it. This is beautiful because you can just save over it. You know, you don't have to like change the name and put different versions and things like that thanks to the fact that I have a backup of it all the time. It takes just a second to, uh, to kind of go. Now I want to go ahead and test this. So let's go search. And then this is the account. This is my test account. Should have four items in here. And there we go. So you can see now here really quickly, my eyes are totally quickly drawn here to the, the fact that I have three opportunities that I've kind of messed up on. Um, lets me know the name of them so I can go change them. And then gives me uh, the suggested date that's like, you know, three months in the future here each time. So in this other one here, I don't have to worry about because that's still good. I still have time in that one. Uh, so just a nice little quick thing. And of course, you know, you can run this against any account and get this information all back. You know, so if I'm given more accounts, you can always run this against this. And, and you know, so I'm always caught up for the sales meetings if I was a salesperson. So that's just something that I uh, kind of came up with to kind of show that. Uh, the last little bit uh, that I want to show before we go is this. Uh, so here you can see if I click in here, I've got my estimated date and I'm adding three months to it. I want to show um, another little piece uh, that will, let's see, let me open the template. This again, I have this under quotes. Okay. So my quotes here. And this here. So this is kind of the same quote that I was working on before that you guys already saw that I've already done. Here's this is the thing that I want you to, to pay attention to. So basically, what this is going to do is it's going to, uh, you know, the quote is valid until the effective date, which is X amount of days uh, from today. So basically, what I did here, if I go to my MSC or Madons tab, take this field and use my field properties to kind of look at the piece here. Am I? Hang on. Hello, field properties. There we go. There you are. So basically what I'm doing is I'm taking this field, the effective date, and subtracting today's date from it. This is the little code piece for today's date. And then I'm giving it my placeholder text. You know, I mean, I could have been more descriptive, uh, but I know what it is. Uh, it tells me here exactly what I'm doing. I'm getting the difference. And then I'm going to get this in days. So you can actually output this in years, months, days, hours, minutes, seconds, milliseconds, and ticks. So, um, so yeah, so get the amount of units and days, and then I will say OK. And that's basically what this is going to do. So let's go ahead and merge this. After I save it, take a look at it. Let's see here, let's just save. Yes. Saving away. There's one other thing you, you might notice on this preview, just something I want to like highlight on. Um, you're going to have to kind of like open up your templates and resave them back because we create that little preview. Like templates that are already in there don't have this preview created for them yet. So you might have to open them up and save them back just so you can get the preview. Um, so anyway, um, so let's go ahead and run this now that we've got it saved finally. So let me search and then do this one, my test record. And here we go. So right down here, this quote is valid uh, from this is the uh, effective date here, which is 40 days from this date. 
So basically letting the customer know I have 40 days. You know, if I ran this tomorrow, it would be 39 days, right? So it, it keeps on, it counts. So that's, that's a really handy feature. I know that a lot of people have been kind of wanting something like this, right? So there we go. So I want to talk a little bit about, take some time here, talk a little bit about a few of the things that are coming up on the roadmap here, a couple of things that are coming in the near future. Um, would be template preview in the dialog, right? So uh, that template preview that you saw where I was able to look through the templates, that's actually going to be in the documents core pack dialog. So, you know, uh, those systems where you have a lot of templates, you know, the user isn't sure which one to run, they can kind of look through these and see the preview of them. Um, the other thing is comments on your template version. So uh, it's really useful sometimes if you, you know, if you're working with a team who's developing these templates, when you save something that you make a comment on it. Um, so people know what you did, right? Or what has changed from one template version to the next template version. Um, so those are two things that are that should be coming fairly shortly. Uh, things that are out in the future for the template designer itself <clears throat> is the document explorer. You know, um, basically the best way to explain this is, you know, how when I was doing the table and kind of going through the different content controls, just kind of showing you, you know, hey, this is a content control within a content control, and this is where I want to put my field. Um, Document Explorer is going to make that a lot easier, right? So it's going to basically give you a list on the side of all your um, your content controls that are in your, and all your fields and everything like that that are in your document. Um, so if you're looking for something, you know, usually sometimes, you know, you have these big, long documents, and there's like a certain condition or something like that that you've created in the document, you spend a lot of time hunting for it. You'll be able to use the Document Explorer and click on that and go right to it, and start working on it right from there. So that'll be really great. Um, charting, so being able to uh, create charts, um, you know, uh, based on CRM data inside Documents Core Pack. <clears throat> and then last but not least is user-defined data filters and reporting. Um, what do we mean by that? Uh, that means dynamic filters for your relationships. That's one of the things. So that is something I'm very excited about. I know a lot of you guys, a lot of people have asked for that. So. That's going to conclude our webinar for today. Uh, just uh, one thing real quick, you can find us on the web at www.mscrm-addons.com. Uh, the Help Center, easiest way to find it instead of me reading out that URL is to go to our website, uh, click on support, that'll take you right to it on the little support link. And also, don't forget we have an awesome blog. Um, basically, a lot of this documentation, everything like that, you're going to find um, on the blog right now. Uh, it's just, you know, if you hover over the little support button, It'll get a drop down, you hit the blog, and it'll it'll go straight to it. You can do a little search for whatever it is you're looking for.